nine NBA games today, and I'm going to be sharing with you my three favorite player prop bets. So I have three player prop bets. They're all on FanDuel, and I'll try to weave in some sports betting strategies as well to kind of help explain to you how I find my bets, how you can find sharp bets on a daily basis. So let's start out with the first strategy, um, which I really like, which is called you know, a screen. This is just looking for big discrepancies between sports books. So you can do this in the NBA. Currently, I have the NFL pulled up. You can see we're on player passing yards, but you can look at any market you want to look at. It's completely free. And what I'll oftentimes do is I'll just look for, you know, try to scan and see where there's big discrepancies between the sports books in like an outlier sports book. So for example, what you can see right here is um, Marcus Mariota, his passing yards line is set at 180 and a half on prize picks. Most sports books, you know, all the sports books have it 188 and a half to 191 and a half. So they're kind of like 11 yards below the rest of the market. So it seems like there's some value taking Mariota his over in passing yards on prize picks. And you can kind of do this for every sports book. Like here's another one, Ryan Tannehill. His passing yards line, 208 and a half on prize picks. Most sports books have it, you know, 221 and a half. So you're picking up a lot of value if you're able to get it over 208 and a half. So you can do this for NBA. Um, you can do this for NFL and just look for pretty big discrepancies in spots with value. So obviously here, it's like there's not really any value. You know, Davis Mills, 232 and a half on underdog, 230 and a half on, you know, prize picks. There's not really any big discrepancies, but Zach Wilson, again, prize picks is 10 yards lower. They seem to be consistently lower in a lot of these cases than the rest of the sports betting market. But anyways, let's get into my player prop bets for today. And again, you know, really the purpose of this YouTube channel is kind of show you, explain to you how to use data in sports betting to find sharp bets, right? So what's so fascinating about sports betting, if you kind of like take a step back, is every bookmaker tries to price things independently. So it may not seem crazy, but it is a little crazy if you think about it, because these are all the same bets, right? Uh, we have Maxi. He's either going over two and a half rebounds or he's going under. But you can see there's massive discrepancies in where his line is set. I mean, under two and a half rebounds is plus 145 on bet 365. It's plus 110 on bet online. It's only plus 120 on Caesars. So there's huge variation in the market. So kind of the way you want to think about sports betting, the way pro sports bettors, you know, think about sports betting, sharp sports bettors is all these bookmakers are, you know, independent data points, although points bet, they have slightly different odds from state to state. So I guess that's one sports book you can consider them. But essentially all these bookmakers are, you know, data points. They're setting lines independently. They're running models. You know, just like the stock market, they're taking bets and moving lines due to supply and demand. And you're looking for value as a sports better, right? You're like an investor. You don't have to place a bet in a given day, but some day, days you may want to place a lot of bets because there's a lot of good betting opportunities, right? Which is why during NBA season, I tend to place a lot more bets than when it's just baseball season. Because right now we have baseball, we have basketball, we have college football today. I'll be placing tons of bets all day long. So long story short, you can kind of use Odds Jam, browse odds for free, and just look for these spots with value where you can get, you know, lines like plus 145 on bet 365 on Tyrese Maxey under two and a half rebounds. Clearly, this seems pretty dang good considering most other sports books aren't even giving you above like, you know, plus 120. The only sports book giving you above plus 120 um, is Sports Illustrated and DraftKings right here. And then this is a DraftKings replica in Canada. So we are using all this data. It's like, yeah, it seems like there's maybe a little bit of value on Maxi under two and a half rebounds at plus 145. So, you know, that's kind of like a fundamental concept in sports betting is just look for value, right? The way that sports books make money is they charge a spread, which is called the juice or the VIG. It's typically four to 5% for some player props, maybe a bit higher. So as a sharp better, you know, I'm not trying to win every bet. I'm trying to, you know, beat the VIG, beat the juice consistently. Um, so it's not like most of these bets are profitable. You know, some in some cases, there may be a game with no profitable bets. 
but you can see even just in the player rebounds market how much random crap there is to bet, especially once you include the alternate lines. So what the positive EV betting tool does for you is it kind of just takes all this data in the market, you know, millions of odds updating in real time and shows you spots with value, right? Where are the big line discrepancies? Where are the bets where we're actually beating the big, beating the juice? And here's an example of a really interesting one. So in Pistons Pacers, we have Jaden Ivey over 22 and a half PRAs at minus 104. So PRAs is just points, rebounds, assists. So what you'll notice is, hey, FanDuel, they're the only sports book with the under 22 and a half favored, right? Every other sports book, DraftKings, Caesars, Bet Online, Pinnacle, sharpest sports book in the world, they all have Jade and Ivy over 22 and a half PRAs favored, right? So just kind of looking at the odds, it's like, yeah, it seems like we're getting pretty good value being able to get Ivy over 22 and a half PRAs at minus 104. You know, Caesars has this minus 135, DraftKings minus 140, Bet Online has it juiced towards the over, Pinnacle has it juiced towards the over. It's kind of looking at all the data in the market, it's like, yeah, minus 104 seems like a pretty dang good price on over 22 and a half PRAs for Jaden Ivey, enough to beat the vague, beat the juice, and have a positive expected return, which we see right here. 2.71% for the top row. And then if we scroll over, this is the bet we want to be on. Jaden Ivey over 22 and a half PRAs. So I locked it in, um, as well as a bunch of other bets. But you can see right here, I have Jaden Ivey over 22 and a half PRAs for $120. And you may be like, 120 is kind of a random number. Why did you decide to bet that? And what you'll notice is just like, you know, most of these sports books, they don't allow unlimited bet sizes. Depending on the market, you can see for first basket scores, you know, depending on the market, FanDuel's like, yo, you make too much money off us. If you want to bet on Jason Tatum first basket, we're only giving you 166 bucks. So it's not like you can go in, right? That's why sports betting is a great side hustle, but it's not something you really, you know, probably want to do full time because even though you can make some good money, it's not like it's scalable. Um, so, you know, bookmakers can cut you off at any point. FanDuel knows I'm very profitable. So they're only going to give me 166.65 on this play. But regardless, this is the first bet I locked in. Really like it. Um, and just again, one data point, two data point, three data point, four data points, all telling us the over should be juiced. This is a fantasy site, so I don't really include it because the odds are the same on the over and the under. But very clear value in being able to get, you know, minus 104 right here. So the next bet I have is Drew Holiday over four and a half rebounds, a slightly lower profit margin. So I typically sort odds jam just, you know, by percent, which just means profit margin. I want to see the highest profit margin plays first. And, you know, we have a bunch of strategy videos that I'll include in the end screen, kind of about how to back out the profit margin or edge or EV of your bet. Um, but essentially, it all relates to probability, right? So we can actually just kind of take a look is the way you think about sports betting is bet online, you know, they have the over for let's say Tyrese Maxey at minus 143. Over two and a half rebounds is minus 143. The under is plus 110. So bet online makes money by charging a VIG, the juice, right? Which you can kind of see right here, right? There's a 33 cent spread. It's kind of like someone being like, hey, I'll, I'll, it's like a car dealer. Right, I'll buy this car for ten bucks. I'll sell it for fifteen bucks. Right, they just charge a spread. So what you need to do as a sharp better is remove that spread, which is called vig. Right, you want to remove the vig. So you go to a no vig fair odds calculator. And what this calculator does is it says, oh, you know, bet online. They have the over minus one forty three. They have the under at plus one ten for maxi. So their model is pricing. That maxi is 55.27% to go over two and a half rebounds, and he's 44.73% to go under, right? So odds relate to probability. And the no VIG odds, or the true odds with the VIG removed, is minus 123.58. So according to Bet Online, this is their price of indifference. You know, they if they had a sports better bet the over at minus 123.58 or the under, at plus 123.58, that's what they think is the fair odds, the true odds, the price where you wouldn't make money. Uh, well, there would be 
you know, net profit zero over the course of the long run. So long story short, this is a play, you know, where the no vague odds, the over is obviously favored and should be hitting at a rate of roughly 55.27% of the time, according to bet online. So on bet 365, they had the under at plus 145, right? So if you go to an expected value calculator and you say, okay, according to bet online, the under is hitting 44.73% of the time, and I'm betting at plus 145, this bet would be positive EV, right? It would have a positive expected value. Now, if they were only giving you plus 115, the bet would be negative EV. You can see this number's negative now. So everything depends on the odds, right? Like, you're like an investor. You know, if a bunch of, like, essentially, like, if every sports book in the market, you can imagine if there was all these stock exchanges and they're all telling you, hey, this stock is $400, this stock's $400, this stock's $400, and then FanDuel, you can buy the stock for $300, that seems like a good deal because you have one, two, three, four, all these data points telling you, hey, the stock's worth $400 and you can buy it for $300. So you're just searching for value. But anyways, we have Drew Holiday and then finally, I'm on Embiid over 11 and a half rebounds. Once again, we're getting this play minus 115. No other sports books giving us better than minus 130. Clear value, enough to beat the VIG. I ended up locking it in. All three plays, you know, you can kind of see um, right here. So a ton of positive EV bets. You know, it doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, college football, NBA, NHL. But here we have one, two, three. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, and, you know, 790 in total profit margin. Again, I've been tracking my profit and loss since the start of football season for all YouTube plays. We're up 23K. Not bad. So hopefully we can keep it going. Let's make some money, guys.